Thousands of South Koreans are mobilizing this hour, adding their voices to a call for the country's president to step down. This is new video into us this morning, showing us a sprawling protest march that wound through downtown Seoul. The country's largest union organized the march and says members will strike until President Yoon resigns. This is the latest moment in what has been an extraordinary 24 hours in South Korea. At this time yesterday, South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol had declared martial law and called for the military to arrest the opposition. His attempt to disrupt four decades of democracy is now over after being met with defiance. This is one of the potent images in what's been that whirlwind, a South Korean lawmaker grabbing the barrel of a soldier's rifle outside parliament. Now South Korean opposition leaders are seizing on that emotion in their pushback, leading a rally outside parliament just hours ago and staging their own symbolic moment, walking together through the National Assembly to present a motion calling for President Yoon's impeachment. Let's bring you the very latest out of Seoul. Jan Kamenzin Brumby is with us from Seoul. And Jan, the opposition is now moving to impeach President Yoon. What do we watch for next in this? That's right. As you were referring to there, the place that I'm standing right outside of the National Assembly has really become a battleground for not only the future of Korea's democratic institutions, but also for the future of Korea itself. It started out as a physical battleground between uh, police, between the army and between opposition lawmakers and citizens that had gathered to protest. After that, it became a place where citizens gathered outside of the National Assembly to a call for the president to resign and call for him to be impeached. And now the battle is going on inside of the building itself, where six of the opposition parties have banded together to try and impeach the president. They've given him two options. They say he can either resign by himself or he can be impeached. They've already moved to make that, they've moved to make that impeachment, and we're expecting them to uh, move forward in that process in the coming days. And they should, or they think they should, have enough votes to do so. And so that's really what we have to be looking out for. Now, some of the allies of the president have said that they're willing to resign, and it seems like the governing party has tried to shift some of the blame onto the defense minister. But really, the people that were protesting today and have been protesting in Seoul and the opposition party seem to be laying the blame at the feet of the president. And for them, it's blood they want and they want him out. Yeah, and let's look together. I'm going to play a little bit of video that's just into us of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. He's at a NATO foreign minister's conference, and he was speaking just last hour about what's been happening in South Korea. Let's listen to this together. In our judgment, any political disagreements need to be resolved peacefully and in accordance with the rule of law. Korea is one of the most powerful stories in the world about the emergence of democracy and democratic resilience. Uh, and we'll continue to look to Korea to, shet, to set that example. The U.S. is South Korea's most important ally, and we know that, Jan, both politically and in military terms as well. So perhaps a test of that relationship here. Can you tell us more about that and any more international reaction that we're hearing this morning? Well, I think a lot of the international reaction has really echoed that of the United States. Uh, other countries calling for this to be resolved in a peaceful way, calling for this to be resolved within the bounds and the realms of Korea's laws. Uh, of course, this is something that affects Korea domestically, but it also is going to affect the international stage as well. Korea is unique in that it has its northern neighbor, uh, North Korea, that has grown increasingly more aggressive. Uh, we've seen reports of North Korea sending troops into Russia. We've also seen increasing tensions in recent months and in the last year between North and South Korea itself. And as you said, the United States there, the strongest ally of South Korea. The United States has the largest U.S. military base outside of U.S. soil in South Korea. I've been inside. It's like a town in and of itself. 28 odd thousand American soldiers are living and working and uh, serving in Korea at the moment. And so that relationship is also going to be tested more and more. Now, I think the United States had previously thought it could rely on South Korea as a stable partner in the region, a stable partner uh, to cooperate with. But of course, if we see more instability like this, if, if the United States begins to think that South Korea uh, cannot be 
cannot be trusted or cannot be cooperated with in the same way. And that is going to undermine that relationship. And that's something that leaders in North Korea might be looking at uh, gleefully. Yeah, and thank you very much for the latest coming out of South Korea this morning. We'll continue to watch as those protesters gather.